January 1st, 2020, the Solemnity of Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God. The Blessed Virgin Mary says, Praise be to Jesus. Dear children, the Lord permits that I should come to you today on the feast of my holy motherhood. Today marks the beginning not only of a new year, but of a new decade. It will be a decade of tumultuous events, both nationally and internationally. God's holy and divine will will be manifested in many ways. The distance between liberalism and conservatism will increase and continue to divide good versus evil. In this nation, there will be new threats to national security. Good will be betrayed. Sinister plots will be revealed just in time as the decade wears on. This nation, however, will not succumb to the evil of the One World Order and therefore the control of the Antichrist. Change will bring about a conviction of consciences. This is the decade when it is most important to discern correctly good from evil, as Satan's instruments will rise to power clothed in goodness. Prayer, especially the prayer of the Holy Rosary, will guard you against error in your choices. As always, I am your motherly protection. I have enfolded in my mantle this nation and will lead it away from the precipice of destruction. Stay close to me that I may guide you in every decision. Pray the rosary daily as it is the weapon against every evil. I will bless your efforts of prayer with the power God has given me. A note is given to read 1 Timothy chapter 4, 1 through 2 and 7 through 8. Now the Spirit expressly says that in later times some will depart from the faith by giving heed to deceitful spirits and doctrines of demons through the pretensions of liars whose consciences are seared, have nothing to do with godless and silly myths. Train yourself in godliness, for while bodily training is of some value, godliness is of value in every way, as it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. Another note is given to read Romans, chapter 16, 17 through 18. I appeal to you, brethren, to take note of those who create dissensions and difficulties in opposition to the doctrine which you have been taught. Avoid them. For such persons do not serve our Lord Christ, but their own appetites, and by fair and flattering words They deceive the hearts of the simple-minded. Scripture verses asked to be read by the Blessed Virgin Mary. January 1st, 2020, the Solemnity of Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God. St. Michael the Archangel says, Praise be to Jesus. Your country will always remain independent protecting its freedom from would-be marauders, economic or otherwise. January 2nd, 2020. Once again, I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. He says, children, do not waste the present moment with thoughts and concerns about the future. In this moment, consider how you can improve your relationship with me. This is all that counts. This is the way to make amends to my paternal heart for all those who live their lives as though I do not exist. I am imparting 
so, so many graces here that should make a difference in the world. For the first time, I am revealing publicly that on the Feast of My Mercy, I will extend to the world multiple blessings. I will impart my patriarchal blessing, my blessing of light, and my apocalyptic blessing. The fullness of these blessings will be received by those present who hold a firm faith in their hearts. Once again, those unable to attend may send their angel, who will return to them with some measure of my grace. Never before has this been offered to mankind, and most likely, never again. This is dependent upon man's response to this life-changing event. A note is given to read Psalm 9, verse 1 through 2. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and exult in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. Scripture verses asked to be read by God the Father. January 3rd. 2020. Once again, I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. He says, Today I wish to familiarize you with my blessing of light. It is exactly as it indicates. It illuminates the soul as to where he stands before God. My apocalyptic blessing does this also but not to the degree as does my blessing of light. The soul who receives this blessing with faith will know what he must do to avoid condemnation and, in many cases, purgatory. I look forward to imparting this gift, this grace. Souls should begin to prepare for this blessing through prayer and sacrifice. A note is given to read Romans chapter 8, verse 28. We know that in everything God works for good with those who love him, who are called according to his purpose. January 4th, 2020. Once again, I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. He says, Children, obedience to my commandments dictates self-abandonment. It is impossible to place self first and still be devoted to me through my commandments. The more the soul abandons himself to me, the more he will trust and be at peace. You will not find true peace in the world so long as you trust only in yourself and human efforts. If you trust in me, you will support the truth which brings peace of heart to you. All the policies of man which are not based upon the truth of my commandments will bring defeat and then collapse. There is no security in untruth. Abandon yourselves to me. I am your creator, the creator of all good. I am the truth. A note is given to read 2 Timothy chapter 4, 1 through 5. I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word, be urgent in season and out of season, convince, rebuke, and exhort. Be unfailing in patience and in teaching. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own likings and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander into myths. As for you, always be steady, endure suffering, 
Do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. Scripture verses asked to be read by God the Father. January 5th, 2020. Once again, I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. He says, In the world I created time and space. These give way to eternity in the afterlife. My creation of time and space give grace its opportunity and free will its moment of choice. It is in time and space my will is made manifest. In the relegation of time, you will always have war and the threat of wars, so long as man does not choose wisely. When free will choices support my will, there will be peace. Great institutions, government, religious and otherwise, rise up and fall because of free will choices. I do not interfere with man's choices. I must stand by and witness consequences of free will, be it good or bad. My hope is always that mankind will benefit from his mistakes. Sometimes I do step in to ensure the continuation of my kingdom, which I am building on earth. Case in point, Noah. Life must be a learning experience for each soul in his journey towards heaven. Today, I invite your prayers to be open to the lessons I offer through time and space. A note is given to read Ephesians chapter 2, 8 through 10. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not because of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Another note is given to read Ephesians chapter 5, 15 through 17. Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise men, but as wise, making the most of the time, because the days are evil. Therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Scripture verses asked to be read by God the Father. January 6th, 2020. Once again, I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. He says, you ask me what is on my mind today. It is, as always, compliance to my commandments. Fidelity to my laws would change the whole direction of mankind. As it is, humanity is spiraling farther and farther away from me. By man's efforts in obedience, he could change the whole direction of human history. The future would be secured in peaceful efforts. The hungry would be fed. There would be no more new diseases. Cures would be discovered for diseases which now seem incurable. Most of all, diseases of the human spirit would be conquered. That means that evil would be exposed for what it is in all areas of human existence. Some, which I call my remnant, comprehend this. They are steadfast in their tradition of faith. These are my prayer warriors, the ones I count on in this ongoing battle between good and evil. Very often the inroad of attack Satan uses against my remnant is spiritual smugness. 
Therefore, dear ones, guard against self-righteousness so that you are a most powerful instrument in my hands. I continue to speak here in support of my remnant faithful. My arms are around you. A note is given to read 2 Timothy chapter 4, 1 through 5. I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be urgent in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, and exhort. Be unfailing in patience and in teaching. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own likings and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander into myths. As for you, always be steady, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. January 7th, 2020. Once again, I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. He says, you must realize that every present moment carries with it my special grace, grace to lead you to your own salvation and deeper into personal holiness. The enemy knows this full well. He sends his minions into the world to oppose every grace and to take charge of each present moment. Therefore, be on guard against impatience, fear, lack of trust, all that destroys your peace. My patriarchal heart is your refuge and power against all evil. A note is given to read Ephesians chapter 6, 10 through 17. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we are not contending against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, against the powers, against the world rulers of this present darkness against the spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore take the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore having fastened the belt of truth around your waist, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the equipment of the gospel of peace. Besides all these, taking the shield of faith with which you can quench all the flaming darts of the evil one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Scripture verses asked to be read by God the Father. January 7th, 2020 once again, I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. He says, Hellfire takes over where religious leadership fails me. January 8th, 2020. Once again, I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. He says, when one show of power against evil occurs, Satan redoubles his attempts in attacking righteousness. Sometimes this is just on a personal level. Other times, such as today in the Middle East, it is on an international level. The false consciences of many and the political ambition of others must not be the driving force of this great nation. These are the Trojan horse of untruth. 
Do not be persuaded by lies to believe that recent actions of this president were uncalled for. When lives are saved, victory is righteous. Be united as a nation under firm leadership. Do not be misguided by controversy. Politics must cease ruling the heart of the world. Wisdom, guided by the Holy Spirit, must transform hearts and justify actions. Unjustified criticism is the enemy. Truth is the victory. A note is given to read 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 14. Guard the truth that has been entrusted to you by the Holy Spirit, who dwells within us. Another note is given to read 2 Timothy chapter 2, 24 through 26. And the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but kindly to everyone, an apt teacher, forbearing, correcting his opponents with gentleness. God may perhaps grant that they will repent and come to know the truth, and they may escape from the snare of the devil after being captured by him to do his will. Scripture verses asked to be read by God the Father. January 9th, 2020. Once again, I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. He says, the people of Iran, the general populace, are basically uneducated in the truth. They are not free to explore the truth. The truth has not been hidden from the people of your country, yet many refuse to believe in the truth. Rather, they are easy prey for the political lies of many. Often it is necessary to flex the muscle of power, but not throw the punch. That is what this country did in the continued and strengthened use of sanctions against Iran. The truth of whom the enemy is has not been hidden from the people by this administration. Attempts to buy the loyalty of the enemy has been short-circuited. This is the only way world peace can and will be maintained. A note is given to read James chapter 3, verse 18. And the harvest of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Scripture verse asked to be read by God the Father. January 10th, 2020. Once again, I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. He says, peace comes to the heart when the soul abandons himself to me. Selfish ambition yields a restless heart. The heart that is not at peace does not trust in me and my provision. Such a one is continually aspiring to that which is not his to have. The bad fruit of selfishness is lack of peace in the world around such a heart. The selfish, ambitious heart opposes the good that others are trying to achieve. He aspires to selfish goals and more and more power. In your country, this is being played out in your House of Representatives by those who will not acknowledge the good that is being accomplished, but proposes to keep it from happening again, unless they have a bigger part in it. Such leaders do not look beyond their own pride. Children, you must not support such convoluted thinking that serves to weaken your nation for the sake of selfish ambition on the part of a few. Good leaders serve those they represent, not themselves. A note is given to read Ephesians chapter 5, 6 through 11. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for it is because of these things that the wrath of God comes 
upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore do not associate with them. For once you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. And try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. Scripture verses asked to be read by God the Father. January 11, 2020. Once again, I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. He says, these are evil times. Satan is able to influence people and to manipulate situations through his spirits of confusion and misguidance. You can see that in public figures who take their lead according to these spirits. You, my children, as children of light, must learn to recognize these spirits by their ill-chosen advice and direction of actions. Pray often throughout the day to discern the spirits you are following. You are not dealing directly with people, but with the spirits that are influencing people, especially in business, government, and politics. Satan is strongest in his approaches through those of great influence. This is so even in some religious leaders. If you pray often, you will be given the wisdom you need not to be misled. A note is given to read Ephesians chapter 6, 10 through 18. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we are not contending against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, against the powers, against the world rulers of this present darkness, against the spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore take the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having fastened the belt of truth around your waist, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the equipment of the gospel of peace. Besides all these, taking the shield of faith, with which you can quench all the flaming darts of the evil one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray at all times in the Spirit, with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints. Scripture verses asked to be read by God the Father. January 11th, 2020. Once again, I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. He says, Obedience to my commandments is proof of your love for me. A note is given to read the Ten Commandments. I am the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not have strange gods before me. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Remember that thou keep holy the Sabbath day. Honor thy father and thy mother. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's goods. A note is also given to read a message from December 31st, 2012, an excerpt. I am your Jesus, born incarnate. My commandments of love, though given to you in the New Testament, are in truth 
the embodiment of the Ten Commandments given to Moses in days of old. To live in holy love is a way of thinking, a way of being, a way of a sound relationship with me and with my Father. January 12th, 2020. Once again, I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. He says, The purpose of my messages to the world is to expose evil and to reveal good, the path of righteousness. Once the soul knows this, the soul has the obligation to choose good over evil. These days, too many do not give heed to what path they are following. Their choices in thought, word, and deed are what pleases themselves with no regard for pleasing me. Every soul will be judged not on what they acquired in the world, possessions, status, or power, but on their efforts in obeying my commandments. My commandments never condoned sex for pleasure only, but sex for procreation between a husband and wife. I never said I would create life in the womb that you could destroy according to a free will choice. The whole issue of respect for life carries with it the obligation to avoid war and terrorism. The direction man chooses to, de to take determines not only his eternity, but the future of the world. Reading these messages requires two things, a change in personal lifestyle in an effort to come closer to me, and a duty to propagate these messages. A note is given to read Galatians chapter 6, 7 through 10. Do not be deceived, God is not mocked, for whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. And let us not grow weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap, if we do not lose heart. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all men, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. Scripture verses asked to be read by God the Father. January 13th, 2020. Once again, I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. He says, children, when you pray for the conversion of a soul, please remember every soul is given an opportunity, a grace-filled moment in which he can convert. By conversion, I mean the soul makes me the center of his life. His heart is focused on loving me and pleasing me. Such souls do not allow anyone or anything to become more important to them than their relationship with me. This is the reason for each one's existence on earth and why I create every soul. All of this is lost on the worldly concerns of everyday life, if the soul allows it. Souls must look, look for me in every cross, as well as every victory of life. I never leave a soul abandoned to the wiles of Satan. It is the soul himself who abandons me and listens to the wrong spirits, the spirits of destruction. If you knew the plight of souls who follow the wrong path, you would never leave my embrace. I embrace those who love me and consequently trust me. I never abandon them, but always inspire their thoughts, words, and actions. I always try to reach the souls 
who do not love me. I offer them circumstances and situations to change their ways. Often these circumstances intertwine with other souls, the influence of which is my will. Allow the grace of this message to bring you deeper into my embrace. The note is given to read Psalm 5, 11 through 12. But let all who take refuge in thee rejoice. Let them ever sing for joy. And do thou defend them, that those who love thy name may exult in thee. For thou dost bless the righteous, O Lord. Thou dost cover him with favor as with a shield. Scripture verses asked to be read by God the Father. January 14th, 2020. Once again, I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. He says, Children, I can give you advice and I can offer you my grace, but I cannot make you choose according to my will. These days, my will is the least understood by any age or any generation. I choose the best for you. I help you to find the truth. The truth is always my commandments. My will is always your obedience to my commandments. The truth, my commandments, is always the same and is not open for debate. My commandments cannot be redefined to suit present-day thinking. Many know all these things in their intellect, but not in their hearts. The heart is where the greatest conflict is today. This is due to lack of recognition between good and evil. Most see death as the end of all things. I tell you, death is the beginning of everything. Use your lives I have given you on earth to earn a blissful eternity. If you live according to my will, you will have peace in your hearts and in the world all around you. If your hearts choose only your own will, then you will live in the midst of conflict. I repeat, I cannot choose for you. A note is given to read Ephesians chapter 5, 15 through 17. Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise men, but as wise, making the most of the time, because the days are evil. Therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Scripture verses asked to be read by God the Father. January 15th, 2020. Once again, I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. He says, The purpose of my speaking here through this messenger is to help everyone to be living standards of the truth, the truth being obedience to my commandments. This is the path to heaven. My messages to you are light on the path. You need light in the world to find your way through darkness. Light helps you to see what your next step should be so that you do not slip and fall. It is the same in the spiritual world. The light of these messages guides you steadily along the path of righteousness and your own salvation. With this spiritual light, heaven assists you and keeps you from slipping into the darkness of sin. The messages hold you to the truth of my commandments and make you accountable as to your obedience through love of me. Persevere in faith, hope, and love as these messages direct you to be. 
guard against fear, lack of trust or confusion. I, your eternal Father, am always as close as your next prayer. A note is given to read Psalm 5, 11 through 12. But let all who take refuge in thee rejoice. Let them ever sing for joy. And do thou defend them, that those who love thy name may exult in thee. For thou dost bless the righteous, O Lord. Thou dost cover him with favor, as with a shield. Scripture verses asked to be read by God the Father. January 16th, 2020. Once again, I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. He says, When the soul betrays the truth, Satan promotes his plans and leads the soul away from my divine will. When the evil one takes right reason out of one heart, he is able to confuse many hearts. Satan knows the plans God has for each soul and is able to weave his way into God's will for each one by attacking the truth. The more influence the soul has upon others, the more devious Satan's attacks are. His attacks are not recognizable by the general public. Therefore, people who carry out bizarre agendas are not regarded as under evil influence, since they themselves believe that their plans are their own and not inspired by evil, they continue upon their path of error without any conviction of conscience. It is my ongoing call to my remnant faithful to stand always for the truth, especially in a public forum. You, my remnant, must be the truth, the truth of my commandments, the truth of honesty, the truth of mankind's responsibility before me and to me. These days my remnant is dwindling as it is more difficult to live in and to support the truth. I will make certain you will always be given opportunities to be heard. You must be certain to use the opportunities I give you to influence unbelievers in the truth. You are my mouth in the world today. A note is given to read Ephesians chapter 5, 6 through 10. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for it is because of these things that the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore do not associate with them, for once you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true, and try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Another note is given to read Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. For we are not contending against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, against the powers, against the world rulers of this present darkness, against the spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Scripture verses asked to be read by God the Father. January 17th. 2020. Once again, I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. He says, You must be aware then, my children, that in many instances, business dealings, personal relationships alike, you are not dealing with the people involved, but with the principalities of darkness, which have taken charge by way of their influence. This is why you have the breakdown of governments and why false information has become the norm in the direction of my dealings. Trials in personal communications have affected the day-to-day -day events 
that used to be easily accomplished. Truth has been the victim. Do not be afraid to question one another or to review the actions of others in light of what I am telling you today. Take nothing for granted, but verify even the simplest details of any transaction. It is not that people deliberately misuse the present moment. Most do not recognize Satan's influence over them. Therein lies the problem. You must be warriors of the truth, holding high the standard of truth. A note is given to read Ephesians chapter 6, 10 through 17. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we are not contending against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, against the powers, against the world rulers of this, this present darkness, against the spiritual hosts of wickedness, in the heavenly places. Therefore take the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore having fastened the belt of truth around your waist, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the equipment of the gospel of peace. Besides all these, taking the shield of faith with which you can quench all the flaming darts of the evil one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Scripture verses asked to be read by God the Father. January 18th, 2020. Once again, I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. He says, I am the Lord of all creation. The smallest insect to the highest mountain was created by my hand. If I willed it so, all of earth could be annihilated with the blink of one of my eyes. It is my will that life continues under my gaze. I speak here to strengthen my remnant, which is the prayer force holding back my wrath. Most of all, I plead with mankind to trust in my mercy, which is also my will. My mercy forgives the repentant heart. My mercy shows souls the path of righteousness. It is my mercy which continues all life as you know it, giving mankind the opportunity to repent before my arm of justice falls. My will and my mercy are one. My next breath spreads my mercy over all the earth, granting mankind the opportunity to repent and turn to me. My every breath is towards this end. As my mercy wills it so, life will continue to live, to multiply, and hopefully to repent. There is still time to change the future of the world by your efforts. A note is given to read Psalm 2, verse 10 through 12. Now therefore, O kings, be wise, be warned, O rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear, with trembling, rejoice, lest he be angry and you perish in the way, for his wrath is quickly kindled. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. Scripture verses asked to be read by God the Father. January 19th, 2020. Once again, I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. He says, Children, you must realize that for any victory to be won, 
the battle must first be recognized and acknowledged. These days, the battlefield is the human heart. There is an ongoing and intense battle between good and evil in every heart. A battle which most do not even recognize. Some who have lost the battle try to persuade others that good is evil and evil is good. They use confusion as their weapon, and they try to win Satan's battle for him. You must be ever on guard in order to win this war. If you let your defenses down, Satan uses the present moment as his own. The outcome of this war determines the soul's place in eternity. On the way to victory or defeat, many lives are affected. Whole nations cause visible wars in the world. Millions are misled by arrogant leaders. Before you will have peace in the world, the battle between good and evil must be won in hearts by truth and righteousness. Pray for peace in hearts, a peace which is victorious over every sin, jealousy, and selfish ambition. A note is given to read 1 Peter 3, 3 through 4. Let not yours be the outward adorning with braiding of hair, decoration of gold, and wearing of robes, but let it be the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable jewel of a gentle and quiet spirit, which in God's sight is very precious. Scripture verses asked to be read by God the Father. January 19th, 2020. Once again, I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. He says, Every prayer said from the heart shortens Satan's reign and weakens his power. January 20th, 2020. Once again, I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. He says, I tell you sincerely, all of the beautiful buildings and shrines and the property itself that comprise this ministry are not the ministry itself. The ministry is in the hearts of those who come here and in the hearts of those who read the messages. I look only at hearts. Those who are privy to the years of messages should be transformed into living signs of holy love. That is, if their hearts are open to change. Everyone sins, but these slips into sin should lessen with every passing moment and every message. You should be able to recognize your own weaknesses and make the attempt to overcome them. Your weaknesses are Satan's portal into your heart. Overcoming your weaknesses is your passport to deeper holiness. Avoid occasions of sin, even in thought. If some thoughts lead to discouragement, do not entertain them. Trust that I am always present to help you, to strengthen you. If you do, your temptations will lessen. A note is given to read Galatians chapter 5, 22 through 24. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law, and those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Scripture verses asked to be read by God the Father. January 21st, 2020, the Feast of Mary, Protectress of the Faith, 34th Anniversary. The Blessed Virgin Mary says, Praise be to Jesus. Dear children, many years ago, I came to this messenger 
requesting the title Protectress of the Faith. My request was denied and maligned by those who refused to recognize the great crisis of faith that was beginning and would become commonplace throughout the Church. Now, in these present times, the true faith is only held in the hearts of a dwindling remnant faithful. What was regarded as unnecessary by the powers that be so many years ago has proven to be a grace-filled weapon in the battle to guard and protect the deposit of faith in hearts and in the Church itself. This title, Protectress of the Faith, has proven to be not just another title, but a shield of great power against apostasy. No one of any wisdom could in truth deny this. Therefore, I come today to reiterate the grave necessity of this title, despite disregard for recognition by any authority. I will come to the aid of any who seek my assistance in the face of disbelief or the persecution of liberal thinking. I will protect the gift of faith God has so generously placed in hearts. I am your shield against unbelievers. I will never abandon the faithful, even unto death. You are my children. I am your mother. I hold you in my arms and embrace you in my heart. I strengthen you against any weakness. Call me by my name, Protectress of the Faith. A note is given to read Ephesians chapter 2, 19 through 22. So then you are no longer strangers and sojourners, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone, in whom the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built into it for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. Scripture verses asked to be read by Blessed Mother. January 21st, 2020. Our Lady, Protectress of the Faith, says, Praise be to Jesus. Dear children, once daily, offer prayers for all political prisoners. They suffer greatly at the hands of their captors. Join me in consoling them. January 22nd, 2020. Once again, I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. He says, You, Maureen, ask me if people can be saved if they have no faith. Holy love is the ladder to salvation. Through holy love, the soul's faith is grounded and secured. Even souls who never heard of me will be judged according to how they treat their neighbor. I speak here so that my children will recognize that I am a loving father, not a stern, unforgiving judge. During this age of evil convolution of the truth, my mercy and my love are very present to all mankind. My omnipresence will always show itself in the resolution of events and problems. Unjust attacks upon those who live in the truth do not escape my judgment. Those who attack the truth very often have the tables turned on them and are discovered to be who they really are, instruments of evil. Even in the worst attacks, I am always there taking account of who supports the truth and who lives in lies. My love and my mercy are always ready to welcome the repentant heart. Unjust judgments upon another's character are still a sin no matter your position in the world. Do not let selfish ambition blind you. 
Live according to my commandments, no matter your status in the world, for no one escapes my gaze. The note is given to read James chapter 2, 8 through 10. If you really fulfill the royal law, according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You do well. But if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become guilty of all of it. Scripture verses asked to be read by God the Father. January 23rd, 2020. Once again, I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. He says, My children, every effort you make to bring an end to abortion gains you a higher place in heaven. It is true whether you say one prayer or demonstrate against this evil, such as the March for Life, or write letters to your congressman. As Christians, you cannot stand by idly as innocent lives are snuffed out in the womb. Many times, elected officials do not act on behalf of their constituents. They use their positions as a means of promoting their own selfish agendas. Case in point, is this farce of an attempt to impeach your sitting president. No matter how much good he accomplishes, evil forces twist his efforts against him. Children, you must form your opinions and your actions around holy love. It is never according to my commandments to take any life which I create. It is never according to my commandments to kill someone's reputation by means of a smear campaign. You must act as children of the light, which is why I created you. A note is given to read Galatians chapter 5, 25 through 26. If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. Let us have no self-conceit, no provoking of one another, no envy of one another. Scripture verses asked to be read by God the Father. January 24th, 2020. Once again, I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. He says, these days there are two sets of moral standards. One set of standards seeks to keep my commandments and to please me in every way possible. The other, polar opposite form of moral standards seeks to please self and man. My remnant chooses the morals which my son came to earth to promote. His whole public image was one of encouraging mankind of their obligation towards obeying my commandments, which is the embrace of holy love. Today, the majority of the world's population chooses the errant set of morals. They live to please themselves and the others who are stepping stones to their selfish ambitions. My will is like a dirty word to such as these. Free will has become its own false god. So you see my remnant, through though small, has a huge task ahead of them. I am dependent upon their prayers and sacrifices to oppose the evils of the day and to expose the evils of the present moment. Every phase of life, every purpose of life is under attack. You have only to listen to the news on television or other forms of media to recognize this truth. Pray, my remnant, for the strength to promote the morals pleasing to me. This is the way to put an end to violence, loose morals outside of marriage, and every form of transgression against my commandments 
which this new morality promotes. You, my remnant, are my voice and my strength in the world. A note is given to read 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, 13 through 15. But we are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brethren, beloved by the Lord, because God chose you from the beginning to be saved through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth. To this he called you through our gospel, so that you may obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So then, brethren, stand firm and hold to the traditions which you were taught by us, either by word of mouth or by letter. Scripture verses asked to be read by God the Father. January 25th, 2020. Once again, I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. He says, one of the political parties in your nation is about to lose face due to their power plays based upon error. This is what happens when people become so self-centered they cannot recognize the truth. I speak here always to hearts for the state of hearts is my only concern, and always has been. My words to the world come into your heart first, and then into your mind, my messenger, and then to the world. Never allow anyone to interfere in that process. You have to be my voice in a world that embraces error so readily. I speak thus publicly to you, my messenger, to disengage those who feel inspired to interfere. Treat everyone with respect, even when it seems necessary to be defensive. My will is always your strength and the refuge of all believers. I can bring much good from evil. Did I not do so with St. Paul? These days are fraught with wars, wars inspired by false gods. Kingdoms will unite, but the union will be evil. Do not always see union as my will. This can open the door to a one world order led by the Antichrist. Pay attention to the dangers which lurk and can easily attack hearts which do not belong to me. Pray to be strong believers in the truth. Pray to always recognize the truth. A note is given to read 1 Timothy chapter 2, 1 through 4. First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for all men, for kings, and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life, godly and respectful in every way. This is good, and it is acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Scripture verses asked to be read by God the Father. January 26th, 2020. Once again, I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. He says, In this present moment, which I have prepared for you, I reveal that my remnant faithful is dwindling. Souls try to reason out matters of faith instead of accepting their faith as the gift that it is. This is how intellect becomes the tool of Satan. Children, it is not your calling to explain in human terms what I have allowed you to know through the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth. 
so many have lost their way by placing matters of faith merely on a human level. Living a faith-centered life is not easy. Society today and modern-day morals oppose every truth of faith. The human reason and erroneous free will choices have displaced faith in hearts. This is what is interiorly attacking my remnant faithful. By the time my son returns to earth, my remnant will be in the minority and very small. This is already evident. Regard your faith as a precious treasure. Do not hesitate to call upon the intercession of Mary, Protectress of the Faith. Desire to keep your faith. A note is given to read 2 Timothy chapter 4, 3 through 5. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own likings and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander into myths. As for you, always be steady, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. Scripture verses asked to be read by God the Father. January 27th, 2020 Once again, I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. He says, The pretense of doing good is dividing your nation. How can good be accomplished by placing power in greedy, ambitious hands? Such motives do not have the welfare of the citizens at heart. Decades ago, this type of attack on the heart of democracy would never have been considered. This bears witness to the present-day conscience of man. Many who are in the foreground today would have been laughed out of office a few decades ago. Now they are given celebrity status by the mass media. Renew in your hearts motives of holy love, which I sent my Son to proclaim to you over two thousand years ago. Allow your consciences to be convicted of any selfishness or greed which motivates your actions. Then and only then will the truth once again reign in hearts and in the world. A note is given to read 1 Timothy chapter 2, 1 through 4. First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for all men, for kings, and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life, godly and respectful in every way. This is good, and it is acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Scripture verses asked to be read by God the Father. January 28th, 2020. Once again, I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. He says, confusion is Satan's hallmark. Constructive criticism brings clarity to hearts and situations. Differences of opinions can be the sound of my voice or the fingerprints of Satan, depending upon their motives. I bring you each present moment as a stepping stone to come closer to me. Use each moment in holy love. It is Satan who tries to coax you into fear, lack of trust, and impatience. Unforgiveness is the bad fruit of living in the past. 
it is a waste of the present moment. You will never be given the same moment twice. Use it to deepen your own personal holiness. Be an example of holy love to others. Each moment is a design of my grace. Do not try to redefine my commandments. Do not disregard them in your daily life. Live always in the truth, which is the reality of why you exist, to earn your way to heaven. Regard the beauty of my creation as my gift to you. A note is given to read Romans chapter 2, verse 13. For it is not the hearers of the law who are righteous before God, but the doers of the law who will be justified. Scripture verse asked to be read by God the Father. January 29th, 2020. Once again, I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. He says, there is a nefarious undercurrent in this effort to impeach your president. Pray that your senators tenaciously stand for the truth. Free will is the deciding factor in this evil effort. Much good will be accomplished if this effort is defeated. Prayer can make the difference. As with anything in this earthly existence, nothing is for certain. Therefore, pray that truth wins out again, as it did when the people elected Mr. Trump. There are no reasons for impeachment. This effort on behalf of malcontents has cheapened the impeachment process into a political tool. Now, it would seem, no election is final. It is not according to my will that reputations are maligned at the whim of an ambitious few. Once again, I call for unity and peace. Do not allow factious opinions and agendas to divide. Be of one mind and one heart. A note is given to read Philippians chapter 2, 1 through 4. So if there is any encouragement in Christ, any incentive of love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfishness or conceit, but in humility count others better than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Scripture verses asked to be read by God the Father. January 30th, 2020. Once again, I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. He says, in your country, the Democratic Party is spiraling into self-destruction. This is due to selfish ambition. In the world, mankind is quickly racing towards the same destination, self-destruction. Little heed is given towards the effects of many destruction attitudes as evident in the nuclear arms race. Safety, unfortunately, has become synonymous with who has the most destructive weapons. False religions that support violence are growing in size, while my remnant faithful is dwindling. Once again, I call all my children into unity in obedience to my commandments. Be united in good, not in evil. As you see the Democratic Party shrinking in popularity, take a lesson in the fact that dishonesty eventually takes its toll. Stand together as an army of truth. Do not be persuaded differently. My blessing rests upon the righteous. 
just as it did in Noah's day. A note is given to read Titus chapter 2, 11 through 14. For the grace of God has appeared for the salvation of all men, training us to renounce irreligion and worldly passions, and to live sober, upright, and godly lives in this world, awaiting our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all iniquity and to purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. Another note is given to read Hebrews chapter 3, 12 through 13. Take care, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil, unbelieving heart, leading you to fall away from the living God. But exhort one another every day, as long as it is called today, that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. Scripture verses asked to be read by God the Father. January 31st, 2020. Once again, I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. He says, You must comprehend that I am the living God, creator of heaven and of earth. I am all-knowing. From my viewpoint in heaven, I see the world population, and I tell you, there are two opposing factors. One is conservative, the other is liberal. These two factors affect every walk of life. They are present in governments, religious circles, mass media, entertainment, dress codes, and, of course, morality. Every so often, these factors become very visible, as they are now in the impeachment hearings. For the most part, people do not search out the difference, but make their choices accordingly. If this were not true, holy love would face no opposition in the world today. Truth would be recognized and esteemed. Satan's confusion would be easily recognized for what it is. These messages would be savored as a gourmet food is. Transgressions against my commandments would not be acceptable as they are today. The challenge the world faces today is to recognize the bipolar aspects of daily choices, choices between good and evil, conservative and liberal. Do not be fooled into thinking titles and authority always stand for good. With a well-trained conscience, make conservative choices. Do not choose to please people. Make the choices that please me. A note is given to read Ephesians chapter 4, 22 through 24. The old man that belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful lusts and be renewed in the spirit of your minds and put on the new man created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. Scripture verses asked to be read by God the Father.